Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So happy to have you. I'm Rachel. I'm Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla, and today we're gonna give you five activities, five strategies to help improve self-dressing skills. I know you do. <laughs> This is a skill that you've probably taken for granted yourself. If you are a therapist, a parent, an educator, you're probably like, oh yeah, you know, dressing, it's easy peasy. But when you break it down, there's actually a lot that goes into dressing skills. Clients that we've worked with in the past, this is a top priority because parents of our clients, they want their kids to be able to get dressed. And you know, it's, it's a big monumental step when the kid puts their sock on for the first time. It's amazing. So we're dedicating this video to helping you, helping your child get their clothes on by themselves. And take them off too. Yes, yes. Which maybe we don't want that, but like it's I mean, important. some, you know what, by the time when you gotta get your pajamas on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we need to note is that when we were in the clinic working with these kiddos, we never just worked on getting dressed itself. Put your sock on, take your sock yeah. off. Put your Repetitively. sock on, take your sock off. We didn't do that, no. Instead, we worked on the underlying skills that are required for self-dressing so that they could build those skills up and then it would translate to getting dressed at home, getting you know, putting their shoes on at school, that type of thing. So we want to address the underlying skills first. So what are some of those underlying skills required for self-dressing? Things like initiation, being able to initiate the task and attend to the task long enough to be able to see it through and complete it. Body awareness, understanding where your body is in space and how it relates to other body parts and how it relates to your clothes. Bilateral coordination and integration, being able to use both sides of the body, top and bottom, and coordinated movement. So being able to hold the sock, that's apparently our example. Yeah, that's going to be our example. Hold the sock <laughs> with two hands to put it on the foot successfully. Yep. The next one is balance and postural control, being able to keep your balance long enough to bend over and pick up something or being able to balance on one foot to put your sock on or put your leg through your pants hole and just also the strength and stability to remain standing and you know, having your arms over your head, taking your shirt on and off. Because oftentimes if there's decreased postural control in a child, they'll lose their balance even doing that. Fine motor coordination and dexterity, obviously, buttoning, zipping, holding and pinching the sock to be able to put it on, um, snapping shirts, snapping pants, opening snaps, opening buttons, all of those require that good fine motor control. Another one is sequencing. So understanding the sequence of how to put their clothes on in what order are they gonna do it? And also the sequence of maybe putting on the button up shirt and then buttoning from top to bottom or bottom to top, whichever is your preference. Uh, but the sequencing piece is big. And then the last one is attention, which I think you mentioned mm -hmm. with initiation, but making sure that the attention span is long enough to complete the entire self-dressing mm -hmm. task. Our approach to dressing skills and independence has always been incorporating it into fun activities. As occupational therapy assistants, that is what we've been trained to do. That's what we love to do. It's what we're really good at. It's what we're fabulous at. That's why we're here sharing these activities in hopes to inspire you to incorporate these fun tools into your play routine. All right, let's jump in. The first one is to incorporate these dressing activities and skills into an obstacle course. So set up an obstacle course with a balance beam, tunnels, crash pads, and maybe set up different clothing pieces along the way. And as your child goes through the obstacle course, they have to put on one sock. They go through the next piece of the obstacle course and they have to put on a jacket and you're gonna incorporate these dressing skills into a fun, sensory, gross motor activity that is very motivating. Maybe they're not into putting their own clothes on, so maybe put dress up clothes, costumes, your own clothes and adults clothes. 
Um, maybe use winter clothing. I remember when we were doing an activity yes. <laughs> with like a group at one point, we almost had like a relay race with snow gear. We had boots and gloves and hats and you had to race to one side and grab it and then go back and put it on. And then we did a blindfolded and it was just so fun. And the kids were so motivated, even though it was challenging, it was a great way to work on tying their shoes, buttoning their pants, using bilateral coordination to be able to put their hats on. So it was a really fun activity. The more gross motor and sensory pieces you can incorporate into these dressing skill activities, the more fun it's gonna be mm -hmm. and the more likely the child is gonna participate and actually build those skills. When you think about it, it was really fun for me and I remember it still I, years and years ago. I remember, that's why I put it in the I outline. know, <laughs> so fun. To work on lower body dressing, putting on socks and pants and things like that, grab an exercise band and step through it as you are pretending to put pants on. Or one time I made like a loop out of um, fleece and Didn't I- Didn't you do like two loops Yeah, it was it? like, it looked like an infinity loop. Mm -hmm. There was a knot in the middle. So it was, it simulated more along the lines of pants and you had to hold it open, put one leg in, hold the other side open and put it in. Again, you can set that up as an obstacle course or an activity. They have to put five of them on in a row in a certain amount of time and then take them all off and then put their, put their arms through them as well. So you can make it as fun and engaging as you want, but the skill is there, but they don't necessarily know or think that they are working on getting dressed. I was also thinking you can use a large scrunchie or a large rubber mm -hmm. band to have the child practice putting on socks. And yeah. so they're simulating putting on socks with that scrunchie or rubber band and kind of just like the pants one, put on several, take several off and have it as an obstacle course or a fun activity to do. Yeah. Another activity would be to practice dressing dolls. It seems pretty simple, but grabbing some preferred stuffed animals or dolls and grabbing socks and scrunchies and pants and hats and gloves and coats and whatever you can find to put on these little friends to let our clients practice these underlying skills. Fun story, uh, a couple of years ago, my son Logan, who's now nine, so a couple years ago, he's like six or seven, he got a stuffed Einstein doll and it came with like a shirt and pants that you could take off and put on. And he spent several weeks kind of undressing and dressing his little stuffed Einstein over and over. And it was a really fun way for him to work on those fine motor skills and work on that bilateral coordination, as well as just understanding, hey, this is how you put a shirt on. You do the head and the arms, and then you do the legs. And that also can translate to improved dressing skills for mm -hmm. the child, for himself. Mm -hmm. My son, who is two, takes all of the clothes off of our toys right now and <laughs> pretends to wipe them like his like we do with his little sister. Yes. <laughs> um, I do want to mention if you need like a checklist, if you're a therapist who needs a checklist of how to identify what's like typical by a certain age, we've always used the real, the rule evaluation of ADLs. I'm going to butcher the name, but it's called the real and it's in a little checklist and it's a great way to make copies and send those home to your families as well. So that way they know these are the ADLs and the IADLs that the child should be completing by this certain age. So it's a good rule of thumb. We'll link it, don't worry. I'll find the real name of it and link it. <laughs> The next one is to get button boards or extra large buttons and snaps to practice. Again, this sounds boring and generic, so you're gonna really have to use your imagination and make it fun, use it with obstacle courses and different sensory activities, but these will really help build and bolster those fine motor bilateral integration skills required for buttoning pants, mm -hmm. buttoning shirts, tying shoes. And you can find a lot of them online to purchase. You can make your own, but again, you gotta make it fun. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna just sit at the table and no. button things. No, that's boring yeah. and not occupational therapy at all. No. Um, I was thinking there's always really fun busy boards on Etsy, that's a fun place to look. And you can make felt button boards too. If you're crafty. If you're crafty with like pipe cleaners and big buttons and some felt, I think that would be really fun. Um, but yeah, I always liked having our button boards. They were like probably like this big, 
you know, and I would like have the child set it up here once they mastered the skill. So it's one thing to be able to see the button board down on the table or on the floor in front of them, but have them hold it up against them to either button or snap or zip so that way they get extra practice and it's a little bit more functional. You could also have them do exactly that, but in front of a mirror. So they are looking at themselves and watching themselves in the mirror and gives them a different visual perspective for that coordination. Totally. Okay, the next one we are going to talk about about actually working on some simulated dressing skill activities, things like stringing beads. I love beads. I love those big block beads. That's the phase that we're in right now with my kiddo. Um, working on the bilateral coordination and the sequencing. It's a really challenging skill to hold the bead, put the string in, grab the string, and then push the bead. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, and that can also be um, practiced in order to help with those dressing skills, even though you're not working on it. If you have an older kid, you can do more smaller beads or more complex bead patterns. So my son right now is really into making the bead lizards yes. and he follows that pattern. So he's really developing those fine motor coordination skills as well as the sequencing and attention, all of those underlying skills. Mm -hmm. Lacing is another activity to work on. One of my favorite things is making like a maze, like an alphabet maze and cutting little strips of paper, making little archways and lacing all the way through them. So maybe you have 26 of those glued down um, or you know, just do normal lacing activities too, that's fine. But it's always a fun one, lacing, it's great. You can even make like your own little cardboard shoe and yes. use a hole puncher and punch the holes through it and practice the lacing to practice some shoe tying, which we do have a video on shoe tying. So mm -hmm. that's another great one you can do. The next one is a game called Pop-Up Pirate, which we just got this. It's an old favorite from the clinic, but it's a great way to work on force modulation and bilateral coordination. So you have to stabilize the pirate, <laughs> sounds so weird, stabilize the pirate's barrel and then push the sword in and it has to really go in far enough in order to make the pirate pop. It is, it is a really fun game. Because then you gotta try to catch the pirate. Yes. yes. But you don't know when the pirate is going to pop, so it's a little bit of that anticipation. Yes. Trip was a little leery of it. He was like, mm, you do it. That's first. fair. That's <laughs> fair. One more thing is to incorporate sensory bins with a blindfold or with vision occluded in some way. And to find items in the sensory bin without your use of vision, maybe you're finding the beads to string onto the string and you're doing this without being able to see what you're doing. So you're really working on a lot of body awareness. You're working on what we call somatosensory processing is understanding that force and that body awareness and positioning of everything without being able to see it, which oftentimes we need that skill when we're getting dressed. Yeah, the term is stereognosis and it's a great way to work on like when you're reaching into your purse to grab the chapstick and you don't wanna like open your purse and look into it, you just know what it feels like. So things like, you know, kids knowing that their what their button feels like and know and knowing what the the hole looks like in order to button together. So being able to do these skills without the use of vision is really important. Try closing your eyes the next time you get dressed and see just how challenging it is. Oh, I lose my balance. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it it's pretty simple, but just know that that's a big part of what we can work on. Yeah, I think ultimately your biggest takeaway from this video should be that you wanna work on the underlying skills required for self-dressing, which will then translate into more independent dressing activities with your child. Thank you so much for being here today. We hope this video was helpful in teaching you how to teach your clients or your child how to work on those self-dressing skills. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast, which makes me think about you need to listen to the podcast, mm -hmm. All Things Sensory. We're on all podcast platforms. Okay. Without further ado, make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release a new video every Tuesday. Comment below if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to learn about next. We'd love to hear it and help you out. Okay, we will see you next time. Or that coordination. Totally. Oops, I looked down. Let me say that again. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally.
Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs>